Today we have our answer as to what the new Affinity actually is. You can get it yourself at affinity.studio. It's been about a month of waiting and there's been a lot of worry about what exactly this release will be. There was a lot of speculation, but here's what it comes down to. Affinity as we know it is basically now free. And if you choose to subscribe to Canva, you can add on premium features. So I installed the new Affinity here on Windows and the first thing I noticed is the top left here. You may remember this as being personas. Now they call them studios. We have the Vector Studio, which is Affinity Designer basically. We have the Pixel Studio, which is Photo. Layout, which is Publisher. And now we have this new studio, Canva AI, which is going to be the Canva features. And for the most part, these will only work if you have a Canva Premium subscription. Now there are these three dots here. You can click on them to access the Studio Manager. And you can see there's also a couple other studios also. We can turn on the Slice Studio. If I go there, that's basically what the Export Persona used to be. And there's some other studios as well you can try. And they're basically different combinations of existing tools. You can also create your own studio if you like. But for now, I'll just reset this to the default. And let's check out the Vector Studio. Now, the first thing you notice is the change in the interface. Everything now is this kind of monochrome look. I'm finding it a little hard to get used to. It's kind of difficult to see what's what now when everything is black and white. Again, you can see all these are very monochrome up here. Not exactly a fan of that. Maybe I'll get used to it, but so far I've found it a little hard on the eyes. Now, as far as I can tell, most of the features are unchanged, but there are two really cool new ones. First, there's the vector trace. Let me place a PNG. I'll say file place. And let's add a PNG file here. So I've pasted in a transparent PNG here. So we can do an image trace here. And this is actually a destructive operation as far as I can tell. So let's make a copy of this layer. Let's call this one original. I'll call this one new. And with this layer selected, once again, it's kind of hard to see. It's less contrast than the previous affinities, if I remember correctly. So now I'll do is with this selected, I'll select vector. Then I'll select image trace. And it rasterized that layer. That's the destructive part. Now, if I zoom in, if I modify these settings, you can see what it's going to look like. Not much difference there, but there's a little bit of a tweaking you can do. Let's zoom out so you can get it to how you like. Now let's click apply. And now this is a vector. So I can modify the points. And this is definitely a cool feature that's been requested for a long time. So it's nice to see that added in there. Change the color if we liked. Seems to have done a really good job. So that's the image trace, which has been a long time coming. Another cool feature is the gradient mesh. So I'll add a rectangle. Let's make it some type of yellow. So I'll use the fill tool here. Let's click that. I'll click and drag. And now instead of type linear, I'll say type mesh. And now we can make a mesh out of this. Let's change this middle part to red. And you can click on these lines and change the color. So it's a very nice feature. It definitely allows for much more creativity with gradients. So I think this is one that will be a lot of fun to experiment with. So that's our gradient mesh feature. A couple other cosmetic changes I noticed also. The vector brushes are now called path brushes. So you can select the path brush tool, draw some type of line there. And I think that's a good decision because the old vector name brush confused a lot of people. They weren't really vector brushes. Let's go to the Pixel Studio. I'll create a new image from a raster. And for the most part, this is pretty much the same. I did know some new live filters that are pretty cool. I'll click the live filters here. We have this glitch one, which has lots of cool glitch options. Some slice options quantization, kind of like a pixelated effect, waves. Just lots of cool little glitchy things. So that's a nice little addition. I'll delete that. It still has the destructive filters. So if you go to pixel filters, these filters here will be destructive. So edge detection is a popular one like that. I'll undo this. There's also this concept over here of the adjustment brushes. And you also have filter brushes. And what this seems to do is create a new filter and apply a mask at the same time. So if I click on this, Let's do the Gaussian blur here. If I click and drag on it, what you'll notice is it added the Gaussian blur filter and a mask at the same time. So it's like I'm painting that effect in. It's basically the same as going to the filter, adding the Gaussian blur, and then just drawing on the filter itself, like we used to do before with a brush. So I'll select the brush. I'll increase the blur effect here. So basically these adjustment and filter brushes, they seem to do that in one step. Then we have the layout studio. And this is the same as Publisher. If you go to the Canva AI one, if you try to use the features here, you get prompted for a subscription. But it's pretty easy to ignore if you want to. If you want to pretend Canva doesn't exist, you can just click these three dots and you can hide the options there. And that's just like the old Affinity. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update of what I've noticed so far. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Is it what you expected? Also, I'll be publishing more videos in the near future on this. So subscribe if you want to see those. 
I'm actually working on a new studio setup, so I'll be back in front of the camera pretty soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.